Hey guys, Friday, April 22nd. Hope all is well. It is a gray day here in the Carolinas. About 11 o'clock on Friday morning, uh, 71 degrees. It's supposed to get half inch of rain or so down at the property. Been raining back home. I'm not complaining, we need the rain. Uh, it hasn't rained in quite a while, and as you saw in my video last week, my water container is getting pretty low. So I'm looking forward to getting that filled up. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a bummer that it was nice all week and then the day you come down and do some work, it's raining. But it is what it is. I'm gonna do what I can on the inside today of that camper and further that progress, I hope. Um, because big things are happening, fellas and fellettes. Number one, I'm getting my bees tomorrow morning. So I want to say thank you to the person that sent me a Craigslist ad for the bee uh, place out in Albemarle. It's a little out of my way, so I ended up calling um, the place that I got some of the bee equipment from in Lancaster, and I'm picking them, them up tomorrow morning. So there'll be, hopefully, video of that, and hopefully it's of me not getting stung. So I'm real excited about that, but also a little, you know, a little nervous. I've never handled bees before. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, what else are we doing this weekend? I got lots of stuff to do, guys. I'll show you that. I did want to mention this, that I um, donated to Mel Bundy, another one of the Bundy boys that didn't make the last donation cycle. So that's 26 out of 28 people I donated to. And basically, I have two more people that I'm going to donate to, but I can't seem to get information on them. Uh, Jake Ryan and... John Ritzheimer. Now, John Ritzheimer had a donation page, but it closed down before I sent the money. So I don't know how to get him money. And those are the two people at this point I'd like to donate to and get all the money that you folks sent to me out of my hands. So if anyone knows how to get the donation to either of those two people, or if there's somebody else in that group that's deserving, uh, let me know. All right, stick around. We got lots to show you. I don't think I showed you last week after I scraped the road a little bit. Obviously, there's a lot more work to do, um, and I got to come up with some material that I can put in here so I can scrape it better and fill in these gaps better. But if you've been paying attention, this looks a lot better than it did, and it is totally dried out now. But like I told you in the last clip, we're expecting about a half inch of rain today. I don't know if it'll actually happen. You know, those meteorologists are only right about half the time. Oh, there's drops on my windshield right now. Yeah, it's raining a little bit right now. So, all right, I'm going to start my, my day and see what we can get done. Well, guess what? It's raining. So as soon as I got started, I'm going to get stopped. Man, ain't no messing around. It's coming down. Loud on the tin roof, boy. I gotta get some gutters up on the front of this place, collect that water too. Well, I guess I'm hanging out inside. All right, so we got a full on rainstorm. So I had to cover up my generator and my air compressor, they were outside getting poured on. And, uh, but I set everything up earlier before it started raining. Got my brad nailer out, hooked it up to the compressor, went to go get staples, and I couldn't find any staples. And I'm telling you, I've come across boxes of staples a half dozen times in the last two months when I wasn't looking for them. But now that I'm looking for them, I can't find them. So I used uh, brad nails. Uh, I said, I'll tack it up, I'll go back with staples when I find them. No go. Brad nails go right through the wood, the wood's thin. Okay. Um, I did find my chain, my sharp chain. I thought it was at home. I looked all over. It was and I came back and when I was looking for something else, boom, there's the chain. Does that happen to you guys? Like you lose stuff and then when you're looking for something else that you can't find, you totally come across it after you looked very hard, you know, a week ago, a day ago, whatever. It happens to me all the time. I'm such a mess. Okay, so tomorrow's going to be a busy day and I thought um, I'm going to go get the bees at around 8 o'clock and I'm going to work sun up to sun, sun down. I'll stop and get some staples while I'm out. Put the bees in the box, in the hive, 
and put the staples in the uh, air gun and just go to town on the inside there. I did uh, route out some channels for some wire that I had to run because I made a mistake and I put them on the outside of the 2x4 when I installed them instead of behind them, duh. And because I used um, construction adhesive, I couldn't just break it apart. It was on there very good. So e even when I unscrewed it, it wouldn't come out. Uh, so it's doing its job. But So I, I routed out some channels to, to run the wire through the, the front side of the 2x4. Um, mowed the lawn, even though it was pouring on me. And I got a 30-pound bag of lime because my friend Jeff said that lime will keep snakes away. And I said, oh, I use mothballs. He said, this is cheaper, easier, and uh, as are more effective. Wow, something just skipped across the water there. It looked like a skipping fish. That's weird. Uh, so I bought a 30-pound bag of lime, and I'm going to go ahead and lay that down after it stops raining, uh, either tonight or tomorrow, whatever. But I got a busy day tomorrow, and I just figured I'd relax today. Maybe I deserved it. Maybe I, maybe I earned it. I don't know. Guess who's back? You know, I asked, and so many of you answered, the old whooper whirl. Whooper whirl? Did I say that right? Whooper whirl. I don't know. I thought it was a bird that was off its medication, but so many of you said that that's a treat. And that they're becoming more rare to hear a whooper whirl. Whooper will. I don't know how to say it. Anyway, he, she's back. And I still think she's off the medication. But you know what? It's funny. After you guys said it was a treat, it's not so annoying anymore. <laughs> so, right, I just made an entrance reducer for my beehive and put it in along with the bee food feeder, the old syrup, the bee syrup feeder. And I also took a pair of uh, pruners and I pruned back some of the trees that are kind of brushing out around there because a lot of you said that it should have more sun. It's weird because I read that, you know, uh, some people say keep it in the shade, especially in the south. Some people say keep it in the sun. Some people say keep it in partial sun. So I got it in what I think is going to be, you know, partial sh sun. And uh, I just want to get that done before. Oh, the bats are out. I just want to get that done before uh, I put the bees in there tomorrow because it's going to be a heck of a lot more difficult for me to be running around back there doing that stuff when I got bees buzzing around me. So. All right, I got to tarp on my gear out here. Tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up early. But before I pack it in for the night and go get me something to eat, I'm going to go make a couple of casts because I just heard something pretty large jump up in this water. And um, one of you guys made a comment and said, isn't that a chain pickerel that you caught in, in the last video? The answer is yes. And, uh, you know, people call fish by different names. Up north we call those northern pike. Apparently down here they call them chain pickerel or southern pike. And I even have one guy that calls them a mudfish. So... Anyway, wish me luck. Well, it's Saturday morning, and I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to get my bees today. So I'm gonna stop off at the hardware store. I gotta pick up a couple of things that I need to get a couple of projects done. I mentioned it yesterday, uh, Staples is one of them. And then I'm off to get the bees, and I will uh, definitely take some video along the way. Man, I wished I got that on camera. I'm driving down the road, and I see an animal crossing the street up you know, a ways in front of me, and uh, it looked weird, like it had a weird tail. As I got closer, I realized it was a beagle walking across the street with a ch chihuahua on the back end of it, just doing its thing. <laughs> oh, it was the strangest thing to see. I guess love is in the air. It's spring, you know. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful morning, 61 degrees. The sun is back out. Man, we needed that rain big time. Well, I'm just leaving. Uh, I'm not at the bee store. I'm at the gentleman's house that owns the bee store. I just picked up a nuke. So he said, uh, "He said I'm not an official beekeeper yet. I got to get up through the winter, and if I can do that, then then I'm an official beekeeper." So, <laughs> but when he was getting me the uh, the nuke, there was a ton of bees on the bottom screen, and we had to brush them off. And uh, you know, it was it was kind of different being around the bees you know usually a guy like me that's not used to them you get around and kind of freaks you out a bit and um, I wasn't super uncomfortable but I was aware that I had a bunch of bees around me it was kind of kind of funny anyway heading back well there she is the nuke I got my smoker there I got some uh, pine needles and leaves and a little bit of paper in there to light it up my lighter my hive tool and there's my bee suit that I'm gonna put on I know uh, you guys that have experience are gonna laugh at me doing this because I don't know what I'm doing and uh, and I have some nerves about me, but 
For those of you that haven't handled bees before, I'm sure you think I'm taking the right precautions. Even though these things are probably pretty docile. Um, they're supposed to be Italian. There's supposed to be a nice queen in there. And five frames of bees. So I'll show you what's up. Well, I ain't going to lie. I can hear those suckers buzzing in there. It's got me a little nervous. But, um, gosh, I look like a weird version of Mary Poppins. Hmm. So for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you know this is brand new to me. For those of you that might have come across this video because you're either new to beekeeping or thinking about beekeeping, um, please check out the series that I did. It's called Bees in my playlist. And I'm basically going to show you step by step what I'm doing. And uh, like I said earlier in another video, if my mistakes, if you get to see my mistakes and don't repeat them, I think that's a win for me and for you. So stick around. I'm going to light this sucker up. See if I could even do that right. Okay, my understanding is you just put a handful of debris in there. Uh, problem is that it rained last night, so I don't know how dry this stuff is going to be, but it it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to just let this cook up, and I'll be right back. Okay, you got the smoker going. I'm going to just put a couple of puffs here. You can hear them picking up. I'm going to take the screws off of... Let me put my gloves on first. I don't know how well you can see this stuff, guys. I'm going to do the best I can. I don't have a tripod. I'm filming with my phone. Just take these two screws out. And walk it on over to the hive. Okay, it's unscrewed. We'll bring you, the hive tool, and the smoker on over. Okay, as you can see, there's my hive. And um, the first gentleman that I talked to told me to put two deeps on there and then split them next year. This guy, he was the owner, he said, ah, that guy was a new beekeeper. Only have the one deep for now, and then in two weeks or three weeks, put the second deep on when you see eight out of ten frames covered. So, I'm taking one off there, and... Um, I'm going to go ahead and install these. I took out the middle five frames. you got to have three on one side, two on the other. It doesn't matter which way is which. And I got my feeder on there. And uh, you see I get the morning sun there nice, so I'll warm up the bees. And I faced it. I faced the, the, uh, the hive with the opening going east for that reason. And you want them to get the morning sun according to what I've read and, and learned. But I've also learned that beekeepers have many, many opinions. So depending on who you talk to. I made that little entrance reducer there. You can See the little, the little opening there, and then I got the bigger opening uh, after they get a little more established, and then I might take it off all together. But, all right, stick, stick around. Now well, here goes nothing. I'll go ahead and take the top off here. He said put five, six puffs of smoke in. And take my hive tool, crack it open. All right, it's open. Now I gotta work fast here. I don't want to leave this open too long, and maybe the queen gets out or something. All right, let them sit there for a second. I just smoked them out. And I'll take off the top. Start putting in the frames. All right. Wow, a lot of bees on the bottom there. There's the queen. Sorry if you can't see all this, gang. I'm seeing more than a little freaked right now. Holy shit. There's one in. I don't want to cover up here. I already got a bee on me. I do not want to get stung, gang. It's not my first time out of the gate, that's for sure. I'm already moving way slower than I want to be. Definitely seem a little agitated. And I don't blame him. Okay, some of them are on me checking me out.
Okay. I was told to give a little shake for what's left behind here. That's the in there. Okay, now they're pretty pissed off. Just down there like so. Oh, I really upset them. There's the queen right there. Unless that's a drone. That's a drone, I think. Well, whatever it was, it's down there now. Now I just got to put the top back down, and I'm out. Got me brushing off the sides here. I don't want to crush them, but they don't want to get out of my way, so... guys, little girls. Well, I ain't gonna lie, I'm freaking out a little bit here right now. Freaking out just a little bit. Sorry that that wasn't great video for you guys. But that's what she looks like. They are storming. Okay. That's down on there. Now I'm going to just get out of their way for a little bit and let them do what they do, get used to their new home. See, they're coming out of that excluder. Nice. They know what they're doing already. You know, I don't want to mess with them anymore. I want to let them get acclimated to the new home. But I can't help but be curious. I want to come over and see what's going on. Still a lot hanging out in the old box. Okay, well it looks like they're able to get in behind the excluder. Hmm, I'll have to remedy that before too long. I also need to put in the beetle traps as well. So, like I said, I'll let them hang out for the day or maybe even a whole day and tomorrow I'll come back and just crack it real quick, put the beetle traps in there and try to fix the, the hive reducer there. The entrance reducer, I should say. Well, I ain't gonna lie, my heart rate was elevated for sure. Um, it's weird, you know, I, I, I've read the, the book, uh, what, to ex what to Expect, I've read the book, Beekeeping for Dummies, and I equate it with uh, reading the book for new parents, What to Expect When You're Expecting. You read the book all day long, but I don't know that it really prepares you for actually handling the bees, just like, you know, the day you bring your child home from your first child anyway, from the hospital. It's like, okay, I know it's in the book, but now what? Anyway, uh, that was interesting. I got him in there. I'm sure I made a thousand mistakes when I did it. I hope I got some decent video. I hope my mistakes uh, show you what to do or not to do. I will tell you this, it was not easy keeping that smoker lit because probably because the, uh, the pine needles were a little wet. So if you're going out in the field, make sure you bring along some extra paper and a lighter or matches to relight it. I had to go back. Side note, it's only about 70 degrees out so far. It's gonna get up to about 80, but I broke a good sweat having that bee suit on for just, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I couldn't imagine doing it in the 90s. Uh, so FYI, if you're gonna be doing this, do yourself a favor and try to do it uh, while it's still cool out in the morning. Most of them are out of the cap. Out of the top, there's still some in the box, but it looks like they're thinning out and starting to go into their new hive. Burning up the old junk pile. I don't know if I mentioned this yet or not, but um, I went to go buy staples for my gun, and the guy at the hardware store gave me the box of them, and I picked up my bees. And when I got around to checking the new box of staples, I was about to get started on the job. Guess what? They were brad nails. The exact same kind of brad nails that I already had that were useless to me for this job. So, um, the store's closed now. It's Saturday. And it was only open for a couple hours this morning. So, it doesn't look like I'll be able to get around to that job this weekend. Which bums me out in one way. But in another way, I'm just not looking forward to doing it either. But I gotta get it done. So, you know what I'm feeling here.
You know, these girls are busy, busy, busy. They're busy little bees. What do you know? I am not 100% sure if this is normal behavior or if this is them getting acclimated to the hive or if they're pissed off with something. I'm only about, oh, I'd say five, six feet away just hanging out. None of them are bothering me. And I'm not bothering them, I hope. They seem to be sucking down that syrup. I didn't quite fill it up, but uh, I'd say it was four-fifths full. Now it's three-fifths full. All in the last, I don't know, three, four hours. Pretty interesting. I see them coming back with what looks like pollen on their sacks there on their legs. Some of them are coming back with that, so they're already gathering. They're busy little bees. All right, well, I came in this morning, and I put the beetle traps in, and I cleaned off some propolis. Yep, they're already doing that. And I refilled up their um, their food. And believe it or not, they, they drew that whole thing down, just about the whole thing. I'd say, I don't know, 7 eighths, let's say that much. I flipped the entrance reducer around to give them the bigger opening. And... Um, they're quiet right now because I just got done going in there and smoking them, so. But they seem to be doing okay. I mean, they're already starting to build out their comb and looks pretty good. Not that I know what the heck good looks like. I mean, I have no idea what I'm looking at. You know, just, like I said, reading about it in a book, watching it on YouTube is uh, quite a bit different than actually opening up the hive. It's, a, it's an experience unto itself, no doubt about it. But I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to seeing um, seeing if I can get these. Oh, look at them. They're, they're picking up some pollen that somebody left behind. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess some pollen was falling off the bees when they were coming in and out. And there's bees out here picking it up. Nothing left to waste, I guess. But I'm really interested in seeing how this progresses. I'm hoping that I have a healthy hive. And that it grows and I'll add the second deep on there and then maybe you know I don't want to get too far ahead of myself but maybe next year splitting the colonies and having two hives back here and that's really at this point all I'd ever want to do I don't I don't think I want to keep multiple hives just two I don't need five or ten but who knows you never know where this thing's gonna grow into so I guess the key here is um, learn as much as I can by doing and eventually um, getting some honey out of them That'd be kind of neat. And just seeing, I'm really enjoying the experience so far. I'm looking forward to seeing what this is like going forward. I can see just sitting here looking at them for hours. I mean, they're just kind of neat to watch, which, believe me, in a million years, I never would have thought you'd catch me saying that. Well, I got the fuel leak taken care of, I think, and the buck's back up and running. I'm going to go do some work on the road, and I'll tell you why I can't do something else here in a little bit when I'm done. Here's the road. This is the good part though. This wasn't the, the problem part, but scraped the whole thing. Ran into another problem. So I get the, the leak fixed, the diesel leak fixed. And now the, I don't know what you call it, but whatever gear or hydraulic or mechanism makes the implement go up and down, stop working. And because I don't know what I'm doing, I take a look at it and it looks as though maybe the linkage broke off or a cotter pin snapped and it fell off somewhere. So. Uh, always something. I'm trying to not get down on buck, but it's getting harder and harder. Well, guys, it's not my first shower up here. It's my second. Uh, but it's the first time I used one of these doohickeys. This is a camp shower. Solar camp shower. Uh, I've had two of these. I never brought them out of the box. I forgot where they were, and I came across them a couple weeks ago, and I took one out and left it out because I figured eventually I'd get around to using it, and I did today. Hey, man, it's starting to get hot. I'm sweating a lot. Put this out in the sun for about an hour and a half, two hours, and it was just perfect. It's just, you know, maybe five or ten degrees warmer than the uh, air temperature, and it wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cool, it was just perfect. And it holds five gallons. I probably had four, four and a half in there, and I probably have a gallon, gallon and a half left. Uh, not going to win any awards for water pressure, but you know what? It was a treat to be able to have a shower, feel fresh and clean. Can't beat it, guys. I just want to show you that I'm running my air conditioner on solar right now and my refrigerator at the same time. We got my fridge and my air conditioner running on solar. Um, batteries are still in float. I just turned it on. Uh, getting mostly sun. 
once in a while I get some cloud, you see, I don't know if you can tell. pretty much sucking right off the panels now. So while I have my batteries fully charged and I got a lot of sun out there, I might as well keep the place cool. If I have to run a generator after the fact, I will because it's, you know, we're getting into the hot season now. It's going to be in the 80s during the day and uh, 60s at night, so it's air conditioning season. All right, got the fresh chain on the saw and went right, went right to work on the stumps. And uh, I got everything that I could see that's, that might be a problem. So next weekend, Jeff's coming down. Hopefully uh, we're going to get this thing set where we want it to. And then we're going to start putting posts in the ground and start building the cover. The roof. The roof is on fire. Speaking of fire, that's almost burned up. Well, the biggest project, probably wasn't the biggest project, but the biggest thing I wanted to get done this weekend doesn't look like it's going to get done this weekend. And that's the paneling on the inside. Uh, there's my antenna Put it up. On, I just had a bigger piece of PVC. I know I need a regular pole But that's what I had so I put it up there. So now it's above the peak in the roof Pointed it at 127 degrees, which is where it said I could pick up a bunch of channels And I still don't get a signal. I took the ground wire off still don't get a signal. I don't know what to do guys There's two of them out there now whippoorwills In my last video, last week, I said, I asked you guys what kind of bird that was. I said, it sounds like he's off his medication. And so many of you told me what a blessing it was and how you used to hear them years ago, but it's real rare now. And I guess I got a pair of them down here because I hear two of them out there. Beautiful sunset tonight. It'll be a great night. It's cooling off nice. It's perfect.